Hello, everybody. It's now Thursday, the 11th of February, 2021. And uh, for those of you that uh, want to be alerted to further episodes, click on the notification bell on the upper right and you will be notified. Today's talk is going to be domestic travel restraints and states rights. So let me pull up my notes and we'll get started on that uh, in just a moment. Okay. Yesterday, February 10th, the Associated Press reported that the Biden administration might impose travel restrictions into the state of Florida. The new rules would affect all Americans as well as foreigners. Republican Senator Marco Rubio angrily denounced Biden and the Democratic Party's growing propensity to increase the power of the central government, even to the point of tyranny. Months ago, I wrote the senator to opine that his support for the destruction of Confederate monuments and symbols was a selfish gesture that disparaged the heritage of many American families, if not his own. And certainly it didn't affect his family, but it affects my family. He didn't care about that. Furthermore, the action would not appease the Democrat Party's intent to progressively centralize government power. I explained that the Confederacy was more than a country where slavery was legal. It was also one that opposed the historical penchant to concentrate ever more power in the central government. Although the Confederate Constitution was modeled after America's 1789 Constitution, Nearly all of the differences between them maximize state rights in the Confederate Confederacy and minimize the central government authority in the Confederacy. Consider, for example, the variances and precise preambles in the, in the precise preambles of the US and Confederate constitutions. The US preamble begins, quote, we the people of the United States, dot, 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 close quote. By comparison, the Confederate preamble begins, quote, we the people of the Confederate States, comma, each state acting in its sovereign and independent character, close quote. Well, dot, 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 close quote. See the difference? Nearly all Florida politicians who forfeited Confederate monuments and memory in a futile attempt to placate the left-wing elite are just as guilty as Rubio. Like Rubio, they surrendered symbols all over the state that were personally unimportant to them without any regard for the impact on those who might honor those symbols. They belittled those of us who wanted to keep the statues in place by portraying us as racist, knuckle draggers, bigots, and a host of other derogatory terms. Put bluntly, they did not want the state's Confederate heritage to deter the growth of Florida's tourism and population. Most such politicians were connected to businesses involving real estate and tourism. Consider the uh, old Joe statue symbolizing the typical Confederate infantryman in Gainesville, Florida, which is where the University of Florida is. The sculpture stood at the Alachua County Courthouse from 1904 until 2017, when county commissioners by four to one vote required the local chapter of the United Daughters of the Confederacy to move it to private property. One of the commission's leading removal advocates owned his own private real estate business. He was a real estate mogul on Gainesville terms. Presumably, anything that might reverse the county's population growth by deterring new residents, such as northerners, would have been contrary to his interests. But of course, that is not the reason he gave for opposing old Joe. Publicly, he argued that the statue was immoral, as though he were a paragon of morality. Although he might have been speaking honestly, a maxim, of, a maxim of legendary financier J.P. Morgan suggests otherwise. Morgan once said, quote, a man always has two reasons for the things he does, a virtuous one and the real one. 
The banker was implying that the virtuous reason is a false, benevolent explanation that conceals the true self-serving one. Anyone with common sense knows that Morgan's principle applies, especially applies to politicians and doubly so for local politicians connected to the real estate business. No doubt Florida's real estate developers, bankers and tourism industry constituents understand that a Biden imposed restriction on travel to the state would be retribution for opposing Biden and central and the centralization of government in the last election. But of course, that's not the reason Biden will give. He will instead publicly claim that the central government is taking more power in order to protect all Americans from COVID. Anyone inclined to take Biden's explanation at face value would be wise to ponder again, JP Morgan's maxim. It is hard to dismiss the argument that America would be better off today had our politicians not been so one dimensional in their understanding of Confederate memory. They never stopped to learn that Confederates were fighting against the tendency for America's central government to seize incremental power year after year, decade after decade. If Americans had never let academic elites brainwash students, induce them to destroy Confederate symbols, and censor those of us who provide reasons to respect the Confederate memory, our society might never have arrived at its present situation on the edge of tyranny and totalitarianism. Well, I think you can see uh, how I feel about a Biden imposed travel restriction on Florida. Oh, in a way, I'd be glad to see that guy in Gainesville. I'd love to see his business sink because of this. He brought it on and those that, that tore down the Confederate statues the statues that we're fighting to avoid the just this kind of centralization of power the symbol the statues that symbolize men who are fighting for that and no entire families men and women nonetheless uh i recommend this book trading with the enemy which i wrote earlier it concerns the inner um inner belligerent trade between the north and the south during the civil war just you know just as a point of interest twice as much cotton was sent north to New England than ever got through the blockade to Europe. The New Englanders, they were fighting us, but boy, they wanted the cotton because that's where the, their cotton their cotton mills made cloth and they needed the cotton. So yeah, what did it take to, to get the cotton? Well, pay them in gold if you have to. What will they do with the gold? Well, they'll buy weapons. And what will they do with the weapons? They'll shoot Yankees. Didn't matter, didn't matter. The, the cotton moguls of New England, all they wanted was cotton to make money. So uh, be that as it may, uh, uh, that's our show for today and thanks for watching.